Ronaldo Exxon is a year older. Both fighters five feet seven inches tall and weighed in at the featherweight limit. Significant reach advantage in both the arms and the legs for Ronaldo Exxon. One contract, four winners eligible. The PFL will narrow those down to two finalists, and the celebrities weigh in, you the fans weigh in. And the winner of that contract appears in our 2022 PFL season. Larry Folsom is going to oversee our final bout you ready? of the night. You're ready. tells us go. round one ready to go. And with that, we are underway. Exxon in the dark trunks out of Brazil. Barnett in the gray. Nine knockouts on the record of Barnett. We'll see how he tries to set it up, but he's going for power here, Kenny Florin. Yeah, he's very good at getting on the inside, too, and he loves going to the body. Got to watch out for that left hook to the liver. And Exxon does a lot of things well. Very dynamic, a little bit more wild than Barnett, who is a little bit more orthodox in his approach, a little more traditional style. Exxon not quite sure what he's going to throw and when he's going to throw it. Nice low kick is checked. Exxon does have more than 20 fights to his name. He's an EFC champion. Wants to get not only the PFL contract, he wants to be part of the featherweight season. He thinks that he can hang with guys like Bubba Jenkins and Lance Palmer and even the champion, Mavlid Haibulaya. He's definitely a finisher, has 10 finishes on his record. Good on the ground, good on the feet. Barnett caught him coming in. You saw Ronaldo Exxon maybe trying to set up a flying knee there. And Barnett's the kind of guy who, who figures you out as the fight goes. You know, he's very much a computer out there. Round one, he's kind of a little bit slow, and he just tends to get stronger as the fight goes on. Randy, there's a nice entry from Exxon. Yeah, very nice uh, entry by Exxon. He's, he's got that typical... Valley Tudo style, from the Muay Thai to the to the way he enters, how he's going to act on the ground. Uh, it's it's a formidable style. He's wild. He's kind of all over the place. You're not sure where he's coming from. Versus a guy who's very patient, methodical, going to plot his way in there and try and unleash that power on you. Vitor, how significant is this attempt from Exxon to wear on the neck and potentially get a choke? I think he has to put this these shoulders together. I think he's. Little reinforcing. I, I will go outside, and the problem with Exxon, I think he's going to his power of of Barnett. So he has to be careful when he's on the trade distance. As you can see, he start walking towards the power hands of Barnett. Back to the center of the cage they go, and although Exxon lands a low kick here. Nick Mangold, what do you think of the patient, methodical approach of Mike Barnett here? Yeah, they're uh, they're measuring it up right now, and I think this is what we're looking for um, to, to see how this is going to go because I, I think they're testing each other out, um, and it's, I think it's just setting up for a fun second round. How much of that happens with a defensive lineman in an NFL game, move and counter move? Yeah. There's a lot going on, a lot of uh, hand fighting, a lot of uh, you do this, I'll do that, um, especially once you start getting some experience and, and going against the same guys over and over again. Uh, you start to get into that chess match of a game. So figuring that out, you know, whether it's the first quarter or the fourth quarter, um, you know, that, that's how things kind of go as an offensive lineman. Well, in the first round here, they're still in the figuring out phase, it would appear, Kenny Florian. Yeah. Nice left hand there from Exxon. Hey, we might as well have Ian Parker join the party. Barnett gets Exxon off balance there. How are you feeling about your bet in this one? Yeah, I appreciate the invite. I didn't want to be left out. Look, I, I like what Exxon, I like what Exxon's doing here. You know, he's really he's mixing up the low kicks. Barnett seems to be kind of waiting. What Exxon is seems to be doing is he's setting up that flying knee. Every time he does it, Barnett's, Barnett's hands drop and then he throws the overhand right. Right here, he's got to get the underhooks, backsweep, get him to the ground or separate. But I think Exxon's really uh, his style is very wild. He's landing. He's a good fighter. I like what I'm seeing out of him. 
Yeah, and, and having that unorthodox style, that wild style, it can be hard to get your rhythm out in a fight. So for Barnett, really curious to see how he adjusts as he moves into round two and three. If we get there. <laughs> Exxon is trying really hard to finish this first round with a takedown, so far negated by Mike Barnett. Well, excellent head position there by Barnett. He's getting that head a little bit lower than Exxon. Now Exxon in that over-under position, looking for a trip, and he gets it momentarily. Nice get up there by Barnett. Round comes to a close with a bit of a flurry and a missed kick, and we will see Round number two. There's Brian Sorcher having a little Bud Light on the winner's row. Carrying that Mexican flag. He was a winner in a very exciting fight against Scotty Stockman by unanimous decision. Barnett Great taking fight. a couple of deep breaths there in this round or in this corner what are you telling him if you're in, in coaching there yeah well i think he needs needs to take the initiative i think he needs to back up Hainaldo x and way more lead the dance a little bit find a way to get on the inside land those body shots and maybe initiate some takedowns of his own but more than anything else he does his best work when he gets on the inside and he's putting together combinations and we haven't quite seen that yet Boston Salmon is also watching the lone finish so far on the card tonight. Little corner stoppage. His opponent Ready. not able to report for round number three. We're into round two in this final bout of the evening. Featherweight Challenger Series action. When a contract become a millionaire. That's the dream for all eight fighters on the card tonight. Only one will see that dream stay alive. Long jabs there from Barnett, but you see the reach advantage of Exxon on display. Yeah, Barnett trying to feint his way in a little bit more, which is a good sign. There's Exxon going with that front kick right down the middle, looking for the face of Barnett. Jab lands there for Exxon and a low kick. Yeah, I think Barnett's waiting a little bit too much for Exxon. And he's allowing the Brazilian to be more comfortable in there. Kenny, really interesting approach here from both of these fighters. You know that there's a contract on the line. You know that Boston Salmon had a finish. You know that Edwin Cooper Jr. came out and blitzed and was all about pressure. Are you doing enough to impress the fans, the celebrity panel, and the judges? You got to answer to three parties tonight. Well, Exxon's starting to pick it up a little bit here. He's definitely going for it. Barnett being a little bit more patient, trying to go second. It seems like he's looking for the counter. Not sure if he's looking for that right-hand counter or not, but hasn't quite found his timing here against the unorthodox Reynaldo Exxon. Vitor, we're seeing a lot of feints, but not a lot of offense from Mike Barnett. How does he get things going with his hands? Mark Barnett is not using his right hand. As you see, Exxon is just going to his power hands, and he's not using that. He has to follow up. See, he's using your hooks. Everything's with you know, intention. you got to be intention. And he's not using intention with his strikes, and he's just right now showing weakness going back. Body lock there. Barnett lets it go. Big knees from Exxon. And now Barnett down on a single. Once again, Exxon hangs on the neck. Exxon does have a good guillotine, good arm in guillotine as well. If, he, if Barnett does get to this, does get this to the mat, still stays on his feet here. Barnett able to muscle on that step across attempt from Exxon. But steps right into the guard of Hinaldo Exxon, who still got pressure on the neck. Now he reaches in to set up this guillotine with no arm in, Kenny. Yeah, I'm surprised that Barnett didn't try to get his head out of there. Can still get his head out of there if he just needs to hold that wrist down and then 
lift up, base out. Exum will close the guard. No real threat from the guillotine in this position. But you wouldn't want to hang out for too long with your neck down there. And now the pressure and Barnett trying to push on the elbow of Hinaldo Exum. Yeah, he didn't really respect it. A little bit better of a position there, but. Exxon squeezing away, not yet able to get the there tap, and Barnett's able to pop the head out. He, good threat from Exxon there, Randy. How close do you think that was, natural? Well, it looked tight. He had it under the chin, he had it deep, and, and Barnett was walking right into that position and making that more effective, honestly. I, be, I agree with you, Kenny. I think he should have crowned his head out a lot earlier. I think he's a counter puncher, just like you said, Kenny, and he's waiting too long. And Edson's so unorthodox. Sometimes when somebody comes at you so unorthodox, it's hard to get your rhythm and find that, to be able to counter. He just explodes in and then he's gone. He's not sticking around. Randy, next time I go to you, don't uh, tell Kenny he's right so much. <laughs> we don't want to go into his head. See, Randy likes me, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a better round or a better end of the round here from Barnett. Um, you know, it could, it could win him round two, potentially. But uh, again, I'm not seeing enough offense, I think, from Barnett here. And of course, Exxon doing a good job controlling wrists. He is trying to attack there. but. Would like to see more offense, more ground and pound from Barnett. Final seconds of this second round. Mike Barnett will finish on top of Hinaldo Exxon. But he found himself in some trouble from the top position. Yeah. So even that will be really interesting uh, in seeing how the judges score around like that one. Yeah, and waiting around can get you in trouble. You know, I, th I don't think he respected that guillotine enough. You see him wincing there. He was definitely fighting to get out of that there. You see that guillotine right around the neck, choking off that blood supply to the brain. And if you don't get out of it, you could find yourself asleep. He was able to push down on the chin of Exxon, got his posture, and escaped. So we will see a third round between these two in our feature battle of the evening. And now a few more seconds of rest for these individuals. And I can't emphasize this enough. Really interesting ready? tactical fight so far, Kenny Florian. But we have to find out who's going to win this fight. And in those slow strategic moments, might not be the most fan friendly, might not be the thing that's most impressive to Randy and Vitor and Nick. So are you doing enough to win yourself a contract in addition to winning yourself the fight? Right, well, what these guys don't have going for them is it ha we haven't seen the same kind of action that we've seen in the earlier fights. So uh, for them, they either need to have some kind of a crazy finish here in round three or really pick up the pace, uh, I think, to in impress our celebrity panel. All the featherweights tonight hoping for an invitation to the 2022 PFL regular season. That'll begin in April. But you got you to not only impress all those parties I was talking about, you have to impress Ray Seffo, president of Fighter Operations, the big bosses. You got to impress Kenny Florian, <laughs> which is very difficult to do. The action has slowed somewhat here in round number three. Nice little hook there from Exit. It's, it's, it's one shot at a time right now. I don't know if it's because of fatigue. I don't know if it's because each man is respecting the other man's power a little bit too much. A slip there from Barnett as he backed up. And, and now Exxon's on top. Yeah, and Barnett has had trouble, it seems, even in round one. It, it seemed like he was slipping around the canvas a little bit, unable to really get a good footing out there. Darst choke attempt here from Hinaldo Exxon. Yeah, if he's able to get into the, the bend, the crook of the elbow there, it could be over. He's able to get out of it now. Mm. 
I think Exxon, when he jumped in, he stepped on Barnett's foot, and Barnett tried to back up, and it, it dropped him right to his, the seat of his pants, and he's in, in a little bit of trouble here with his neck, but, uh, you know, as wild and, and explosive as Exxon is, he hasn't been terribly effective, honestly, and, and I think that Barnett has just waited. He's just waited too long. He's a counter puncher, so you'd think a guy that's coming in would feed into that, but he's just waited too long. And there, Exxon tried to roll to a choke. Nick, shoot me straight. This has not been as exciting as some of the other fights. I mean, you're part of the, the celebrity vote. Have either of these guys shown you they deserve a contract so far? Yeah, you know, it, it, it really hasn't been that exciting. You know, I know it's very technical from Exxon, and he's doing a great job fending off Barnett, but, you know, I, I still don't think he's putting up a, an exciting fight that we've seen earlier. Um, but it's still, I mean, anything can happen in these next few minutes, and, and we'll see. Um, but so far, I, I feel like these two have been the most measured so far. Vitor, you're a finisher. How do you get a finish inside L of two minutes? Listen, I'll be real, and I will help these fighters to understand. When you're fighting to get an opportunity, you gotta come to show what you come from. They are fighting not to lose. This is the wrong approach in this series. Everyone who comes to PFL and trying to earn a possible contract to win a $1 million, you gotta give it all, and they're not giving. They're just fighting, trying to win by points. You can't. You gotta go after it. 90 seconds to get after it for Ronaldo Exxon. And Mike Barnett. Ian Parker, you picked Exxon in this one. He landed a couple there. Yeah, I think he's going to win this fight. I, I think everything the celebrity panelists have said is spot on. Exxon's not doing enough to impress to get a contract. You know, there's been opportunities for him to take the fight to the floor in advance. I didn't like what he went for with that guillotine choke, but he, he'll get the win, but not the contract. We'll see if Mike Barnett can make anything happen. Another slip from Barnett. He's had traction problems, Kenny, as you yeah. mentioned, the whole fight. Yeah, he sure has. Exxon now trying to go for a flying knee. It looks like a double knee there. Barnett just not able to get a read on Exxon at all. You see in here, both corners pleading for some urgency from their fighters. More measure, even in the closing moments of this fight. Another leaping attempt there from Exxon. And we'll see this one come to a close. No finish. Exxon thinks he's done enough. And after three rounds, the scores are 30-27, 30-27, and 29-28. All for your winner by unanimous decision, Reynaldo Exxon. Yeah. Exxon with his fourth victory of the row, and when we return, four winners tonight get narrowed down to two finalists and one contract on the line.